board. It's very special. Uh, John, thank you. And not just for tonight. Well, not at all for tonight, but well, some of for tonight, but the rest of uh, you know what a, what a dear friend you are to me, and I appreciate that more than anything. Um, and obviously, I'd like to thank my wife, Beth, who's not here. She is taking care of my four boys at home. Before you start doing the math, there's two human, Brandon, who's 15, and Kyle, who is 13, and then my two dogs, Ace and Milo. Um, she is responsible for so much support over the last 16 years. I would not have been able to accomplish what I've done or the achievements that I've been allowed to achieve without her constant support. And of course, the two greatest things, uh, my boys that I've ever done in my life, I was you know, not very responsible for that either. She did a lot more in that regards as well. <coughs> hey, I was there. <clears throat> um, what an honor to be inducted with the other inductees, Diane and Bobby. That, I, I love what John said. I think it is the, we're like the triangle of inductees. It's perfect, it hits on all three parts, and, uh, and that's a memory I'll always have. Um, my heart has always been in Region 5, and uh, I, I coach now in Region 4. And so if I get a chance to go to nationals and you guys see me there, and if I start yelling five, five, just go Dan, stop. It's, shh, your, your people are getting upset with you. But 32 years in this region, and um, what an honor. It's it, uh, the same sentiments the other coaches and other people that got awards say about this region. It's very special. It is a little different than other regions. The last six years, uh, I was in the college coaching world. Very hard for me to stay partial when you guys would walk in with those awesome, other people say stupid, I say awesome lights, uh, the glasses. Um, but that, that was okay. They all knew where my heart was and it probably always will be. Um, I, I typically don't like looking back as a rule, I mean, that was fun and a little scary. Um, you couldn't see me real well, so thanks for not making that real clear, Chase. <laughs> I don't want people seeing all. And John made most of that mullet leg stuff up, so. Um, but there's one thing for sure, that I've, uh, I've had an opportunity to coach some great athletes. And there's one thing that I used to joke with my gymnasts and actually still do but there's a difference now than when I used to do it. And when they would do something good, I'm like, you just made me look good, that's what I like. And when they would do something poor, I would say, that's not making me look good, you gotta do better. So, and when I was early in my career, it was a joke, with some truth along with it. And what I mean by that was, as a younger coach, um, I would say jokes like that, but I also took something personal, that when my athletes didn't compete or perform as well as I wanted them to, I, I took it like it was my fault. And that was not productive. That was not beneficial for me, not beneficial for my athletes. You can ask them about instances a long time ago, but um, it, it was not a healthy environment. It's not the way I wanted to coach. And I feel too often coaches put their self-worth on whether their athlete hits a beam routine or sticks their vault. And I think if we can learn that sooner than later, we'll be a lot better, a lot happier, and our athletes will be a lot happier and a lot healthier. That our success and how our athletes do, it, yeah, it reflects, I mean, it could have been my coaching was bad, but then that's, that's on me. But also, it's, we, we have to understand that they're human, they're kids, and they make mistakes. So uh, I've never known an athlete to purposely mess up I've never known an athlete to purposely go out there and, and fall or not stick when they could have. So that's a lesson that um, it took me a while to learn, but it's a very, very valuable one. But I do still make the joke. Um, one thing that I want to, uh, when I say I don't like looking back, my kind of my motto the last couple years has been, the only thing that matters is what you do next. And I've said that to my athletes, regardless of how they did. They could have gotten a 10-0 on vault. The only thing that matters is what you do next. Are you gonna think you've arrived? You're gonna think you can't improve anymore? Or are you gonna go back in the gym and keep training and try and get a little better, even though you've done technically as good as you can do? And uh, it's kind of that way through life, too. So whether, 
whether you're a gymnast and you did something great or did something horrible, what are you gonna do next? If you're dealing with frustration or injuries, I understand it doesn't seem fair, uh, but what are you going to do next? That's the only question you need, you need to ask. It, it, you're right, and you're probably right. It doesn't, it's not fair sometimes what happens. You know, the saying fair is where they judge pigs. It's not fair, life isn't fair. Thank you, the, yeah, one person, God bless you for laughing at that. Um, but as a coach, what are you going to do next? As a parent, maybe as a friend, maybe your friend is going through something that's tough and hard. So what are you gonna do next as a friend? What are you gonna do, I mean, you could take it in life in general. Continue to ask yourself, the only thing that matters is what I do next. Don't sit and feel sorry for yourself. Don't feel sorry for that person over there. Um, or, wow, I'm glad I'm not that person. How about how can we help that person out? How can we be a better friend, a better teammate, a better owner? What can I do to make my staff a little better? What can I do next? And this just recently came about. I was six years at Nebraska. I'm no longer there. Someone asked me yesterday, or asked me just today, why did you leave Nebraska? And I said, well, when your boss sits you down and says, we're not bringing you back next year, we're going in a different direction, it's very motivating to, to it's helpful. I'm just being honest, you know, I mean, <clears throat> so I can't take all the credit or none of it. But, but honestly, I could have been mad and angry and this stinks, I have a family to provide for, I'm out of a job, what am I gonna do? And instead of looking at what just happened, I needed to instantly focus on the only thing that matters is what I do next. And I can't ask my athletes to live this way, deal with frustration, all of that stuff, if I'm not willing to do the same myself. So, um, like I said, I am coaching in Region 4 now. Um, and I, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to try hard to bring some of the the knowledge and the things that work and made this region so successful. And I'm gonna bring them, try and bring them to region four because people need to understand why it is such a family and how it became such a family and how they dominated for so many years and the success that they had. There is a reason. It's for gymnasts like you. It's because of coaches like you, judges, owners. It's because of you guys all working together, like Lori said. It's a team effort. And I am going to try and instill that a little bit in Region 4, but my heart will always be um, in Region 5. But yeah, I'm going to yell. It's going to happen. So last thing I want to say is uh, we have such an amazing opportunity to influence lives in this sport that we're part of and to make a real difference. And I hope none of us ever forget that, that the opportunity we have is amazing and take advantage of that. And you hear how the athletes talk about the coaches. Coaches don't take it lightly. You influence them greatly. And it's an opportunity and a privilege we have to do that. Um, again, thank you. I am uh, very honored, and this is a memory of a lifetime. Thank you again. <laughs> <laughs>